Thank you very much, Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, I speak to you as a long-time supporter of the Iranian resistance and a strong supporter of women's rights in both Iran and Iraq. I believe that Ashraf is the most significant factor in confronting the religious and terrorist dictatorship in Iran that is moving towards acquiring a nuclear bomb. And at the same time, defending Ashraf is in line with our, our values, our Western values, promotion of democracy and human rights and defending the Arab Spring. I must, I must reiterate that if we don't stop the Iraqi government flouting international law, because that's what they're doing, and in its effort to destroy Ashraf residents, then tomorrow it may all be too late. I am deeply concerned that the Iraqi government, in line with its unlawful deadline to close Iraq at the year's end, and the orders of the Iranian extreme leader, Khamenei, is preparing to attack Ashraf. The Iraqi government is obstructing the UN agencies in resolving the Ashraf issue. They are, for instance, applying pressure to disrupt the work of the, of the UNRWA uh, UNRWA HCR in determining the refugee status of Ashraf residents. The women in Ashraf, in particular, have had to endure abysmal physical and psychological torture by the Iraqi government forces. Just imagine the courage it must take these women to fight for women's rights in a regime like the one in Iran. It really is absolutely amazing. And I'm, I, I'm just absolutely I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by what it must take them to, to, to uh, uh, announce their opposition and to indulge in opposition in that kind of context. We must do everything we possibly can to try to prevent this from, hap from happening. Governments should stand alongside the Iranian resistance that represents the will of the Iranian people for freedom, democracy, separation of religion and state, gender equality, and a non-nuclear Iran. Thank you. Uh, thank you, my lord. Uh, can I say how good it is to be with you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and to uh, share again a platform with my distinguished colleagues. Let me start my words by categorically stating that I, too, uh, call upon Iraq to lift its illegal deadline to close Camp Ashraf by the end of the year, and that, I, furthermore, I support an urgent visit to Camp Ashraf by the EU's newly appointed ambassador, uh, Jean de Ruyt. But I would like to concentrate my remarks on the values of Ashraf itself and question why it is that the Mullah's regime in Iran would like to eradicate it. Let us ask why the fate of 3,400 members of the Iranian opposition group, the PMOI, in the middle of the barren desert is so important to them. If, as the Mullahs say, Ashraf residents are part of an insignificant grouplet, then why pay so much attention to them? Why do they think this small camp is so important to their way of life? When asked, they never answer that question, but significantly, nor does our own government. We all remember the scenes of the uprising in Iran in 2009 following the sham presidential elections. Scenes that actually lit the tinderbox of the Arab Spring. We mustn't forget that it was in Iran that the uprisings first occurred. Millions of young Iranians then cried freedom and demanded an end to clerical rule. And oddly, the slogans they chanted on the streets, down with the supreme leader, were exactly the slogans of the PMOI in Camp Ashraf. 
maybe that should give us an inkling of why the Mullahs consider the residents of Camp Ashraf to be so important. The Mullahs see residents in Camp Ashraf as being a beacon for a genuinely open, transparent, fair and democratic Iran. That's the message that they're frightened of. That's the thing that most bothers them about this small camp in the middle of a very harsh desert. And it's about time we impress that also upon our own foreign secretary. And as a member of this house, the mother of parliament, as a supporter of freedom and democracy all my life, as we all are, brought up to believe in the value of the individual within society. The truth is that Ashraf has turned into a beacon of hope and a bastion of freedom for the millions who demand freedom, human rights and democracy for Iran. And I want to urgently press my own government and to press Foreign Secretary Haig to support an urgent visit to Ira Ira Ashraf by the UN's envoy, as I said in the op my opening remarks. But I also want to press him to support the stationing of a permanent UN protection team at the camp prior to the withdrawal of US troops from Iraq at the end of this year. That's a vital request. Uh, and we need to impress it upon him with all the strength we can bring to bear. The Foreign Secretary should further be pressing Iraq to lift its unlawful siege of Ashraf and to cast aside its unlawful deadline of closing Ashraf forcibly at the end of the year. And we need the UNHCR to urgently recognise all Ashraf residents as refugees under international law. We need William Hague to change the government's stance um, and to begin to recognise, support and even give some help to the main opposition group of the Iranian uh, regime. <laughs> Thank you very much, my Lord. And Brian was so right about Camp Ashraf. Many outside there would think, why are we concerned about these 3,400 people uh, when there are many millions of people being persecuted and abused for their beliefs? Well, the reason is, and he picked the right word, I think, he picked the word a beacon, it, because not only is it a beacon, but it's a symbol, a great symbol of what Iran could be. There is a country in microcosm, a country where people are free, where people can give their talents and energies to the best purposes in Camp Ashraf, but could be doing that in Iran as well. And of course, because Camp Ashraf is under threat, we are concerned that uh, when President Obama decided to announce the withdrawal of his troops, uh, so, we are here not just to talk about these matters, but to act. And I urge you all to do your best to inform our government and to inform the European Union Foreign, Foreign Policy Chief, Catherine Ashton, uh, to take the following steps. Publicly denounce the December deadline set up by the Iraqi government and use all possible means to convince the government of Iraq to cancel the deadline also urge the US government to do so as well. And to take in the initiative for Ashraf protection to the U UN Security Council uh, for adopting an urgent decision to provide the necessary protection for all the residents of Ashraf. Thank you.